In the workshop, how to convert a locomotive tender hand pump to a standalone version. And what do I mean by standalone? Well, I mean a self contained pump with unions on the inlet and outlet. This type of hand pump is meant to be inside the water tank of a tender. And that's why the inlet for the water on the pump is just a hole in the bottom, because this is normally totally immersed in water, so the water enters the pump through this hole. But this design is really no good for what I need for this installation. I need to fit a pipe union on the inlet to the hand pump, which will be fed with water from a remote water tank. I could quite easily make a right angled water fitting and thread it 5 16 by 32. But here's what I prepared earlier. I just looked in my box of bits and I found an old Stuart clack valve. So all I had to do was thread the water inlet 5 16 by 26 threads per inch to suit the clack valve because it is 26 threads per inch and not 32 threads per inch as with the CME standard clack valves. CME clack valves are also available from Blackgates Engineering. Now there is a 90 degree union sticking out of the pump, as you can see the pump is not going to sit level on any surface, so I need to make an extender block on which to mount the pump, and this extender block in turn will be screwed down to the baseboard. So I'm cutting the block on my old bandsaw. It's a bit old, a bit rough, and it's not very good to look at, but it does the job. Just like a girlfriend I once had. At this stage I thought I would quickly insert a view of the Castle V6 boiler, before going over to the milling machine to clean up the block that I've just cut from this piece of bar stock. I'd like to take this opportunity, whilst the milling machine is doing its thing, to apologise for the sound on this video. Currently I'm recording this voiceover in the studio, but there are a couple of machines on, doing a major backup of about half a terabyte's worth of data, which is not a lot, but it appears to be quite a lot whilst it's going over the network. And while the backup is taking place, you're currently watching me milling the top of this steel block. And the milling cutter is in my very old Jacob's chuck, which is very stiff, and it never works loose, and it's just convenient to clamp it in there. I could use an R8 collet, or even my Clarkson milling chuck, but for general bits of milling, this is perfectly acceptable. I just put the milling cutter into the drill chuck and tighten it up and it never works loose. Although at this point, I must add that if I was doing an important piece of milling, like on a casting, I would probably use the milling chuck. This is quite a nice effect. It looks like something from a science fiction film. All I've done is put some 3-in-1 oil on the top surface. And as the metal chippings coming off the steel are very, very hot, the oil smokes, just like you can see here. And the effect is even stranger if I speed up the video. I must confess that I'm guilty of not applying sufficient cutting lubricant to pieces of metal that I'm cutting, either in the lathe or in the milling machine. But then again, this smoke coming off the parts can't be good, because obviously I'm breathing it in. And thankfully now I'm not breathing it in, because I've finished the block and the pump is sat on the block. What I'm doing here is using a felt tip pen and I'm blackening each corner of the piece of metal. And that's so when I scribe the marks through the holes of the pump, I'll be able to see them. And I do not have a right angle scriber, note to self, next time I go up to Blackgate's Engineering, buy one. I'm currently using the points of a pair of tweezers, which is not ideal, but it does the job. And in this clip, I'm scribing lines between the marked points, just to make sure that they are in the correct place, and they seem to be. It's always a good idea to do this, just to verify that all the markings are fully in line with each other. Because the other alternative is to drill the holes in the wrong place, and you don't want to do that. From time to time, I still drill holes in the wrong place. I'm not perfect at this, not by a long way. But with years of experience, my eyes are reasonably well calibrated. As usual, I'm starting off with the centre drill to spot the holes in the correct position. And then by setting the depth stop of the drilling machine, it allows me to drill the holes all to the same depth. I'm going to thread these holes 6BA and I'm currently using a number 48 drill for this. This is a very small drill bit so I'm trying not to put too much pressure on it as I don't want it to break off in the hole. Now I'm going to thread these holes using the 6BA tap and the lubricant that I'm squirting onto the upturned tobacco tin is my usual lubricating oil that I make up from 1000 grade steam oil 50% 3-in-1 machine oil, 25%, and the magic ingredient, rapeseed oil, or canola oil, and this makes up the other 25%. I find this oil mixture to be really effective 
when lubricating the bearings of steam engines. It's just a bonus that it's also very good for the lubrication of taps and dies when thread cutting. And in no time at all, I have four 6BA threads in the corners of the metal block. Now it's time to use some Loctite 603 to hold these four brass bolts in place. And because I used the depth stop on the drilling machine when I drilled the holes, all I have to do now is screw the brass bolts in place into the holes as far as they'll go. Once all of the bolts were screwed into place in the block, I used my bandsaw to cut the heads off the bolts because I don't need the heads in place. I'm actually making studs. Studs can often look a lot better than little bolts, and far better than slotted screws. So here's the pump sat on its block, and all I have to do now is simply bolt the pump to the block. But not just yet, I need to drill a couple more holes because the block itself will need to be screwed down to the baseboard. I'm checking the dimensions with my steel ruler before I commit myself and drill the holes all the way through, and as usual, I pilot the holes using a centre drill. In this clip, I'm making doubly sure that the hole is in the correct position before I start fully drilling the hole with the centre drill. Once I'd centre drilled the first hole, I just wound the cross vise into position so I could drill the second hole. After the centre drilling had been completed, I drilled the holes all the way through with a 3 16 of an inch diameter drill. I have two choices. I can fasten this component down onto a metal plate using a pair of countersunk 2BA bolts, or alternatively I can screw the component down onto the wooden baseboard using a couple of wood screws. Obviously I do have to use countersunk bolts because if I don't use countersunk bolts the pump isn't going to fit on top of the block. So what I need to do now is countersink the holes. And as you can see from this clip, once again I'm using my oil mixture to lubricate the countersink. And once again I used the depth stop on the drilling machine to make sure that both of the countersinks were identical. I'm about to paint this component and to stop the paint from getting on the threads I'm using some old silicone rubber tubing and don't ask me why it's pink. That's the way it was bought many years ago as fuel tubing for a model aircraft. Before I start to paint this part I'm just removing any burrs from around the edges of the countersinks using a needle file. And now I'm blowing away any particles with an airline. A bit of a health warning on this, if you're going to use an airline to blow particles off pieces of metal, do wear eye protection. And now in the outer part of the workshop, right next to the boiler's base, I'm painting this block with etch primer. And as usual, this is precision paints etch primer as I've shown in previous videos. And another health and safety warning, if you're doing a job like this, particularly with etch primer that's very nasty, you need to wear a breathing mask, and any painting should always be carried out in a very well ventilated area. While I was in painting mode in the outer part of the workshop, I thought it was a good time to give the boiler base a coat of black paint. This is HMG Satin Black, and it's really good paint. And that's about it for this episode. In a couple of days when the paint's dried and hardened, I'll be able to mount the parts to a baseboard, and I'll be able to test how effective a coal fire is in the V6 boiler. But for now, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.